The Neil Mellor Football Show is sponsored by the Red Balloon Toy Shop, selling classic toys for today's kids. Find us by West Kirby Train Station. Hello everybody and happy Christmas to you wherever you are. It's another episode of the world famous Neil Mellor Football Show. Without Neil Mellow, it would just be called The Football Show, which wouldn't be a very good title at all. Um, if you're stumbling across us, by the way, on New Year's Day with a raging hangover, then we apologise, because Liverpool are probably by now 10 points clear at the top of the Premier League, and this is all going to seem horribly out of date. But just for the record, we're recording this before Boxing Day. So at the moment, Liverpool are top of the Premier League. If Arsenal's result goes Liverpool's way tonight, as it is... Yeah. Liverpool will be top of the league at Christmas. Now then, if I'd have told you that in August, you'd have laughed me out of the out of the ground. I think most Liverpool fans would probably have felt the same. It's something that obviously we've all wanted to be in that position, but just with recent seasons, we've not really looked like toppling those top teams. But obviously, with the, all the all the change with those top teams, Chelsea, Man City, United, it's it's really opened up the Premier League this season, and, and we deserve to be top of the table this season. We've had some fantastic results. You know, form recently has obviously shown that. But we've we've been a top side, and we des we deserve to be in that position at the moment. And I'm looking I'm looking back to last season. I remember going to Boxing Day, Stoke away. We got battered three one, and I think we were lying ninth in the Premier League, and, and things looked a long way away from those top four places. This Christmas, top of the table, those top four places look a real, realistic prospect. Yeah, and you're right, it was really important, wasn't it, that Liverpool got off to a, a fast start this season with the other teams changing their managers. There was a sense that it might take them a while to, to, to bed in, and City and Chelsea are starting to, to get things together. United, fortunately, aren't. Um, and Liverpool, as you say, have really taken advantage. Yeah, and, and the fixtures have been kind to us, but you've got to say we've still had to beat those teams. Yeah. Um, and we've, we've done it comfortably. I mean, Anfield this season has been one of the toughest places, barring Man City, to visit for any Premier League side. And we haven't been beating teams. We've been absolutely battering teams. And that's been, <laughs> and that's been the thing. So teams are coming to Anfield thinking we could be getting done three or four here. And that's not happened for many years. So it's, uh, it's a great feeling. And it's, I suppose the fans as well walk into Anfield like I have done a few times this season. Really excited knowing you're going to see a good game of football and plenty of entertainment. Yeah, you say the fixtures have been kind, but Liverpool have won eight more points um, at this stage than they did from the corresponding fixtures against the same teams. So they they have up the game. It's not just a case of I th I think being I'm lucky. Uh, I'm talking about the early fixtures at the start of the season. When, when you when you want to get off to a good start, we saw the start of last season didn't get off to a good start, and, and we're playing catch up for the majority of this, the, the season. This season, the fixtures have been there for us to win it and we and we have won those games so that's given us the platform to build on and, and we're still I mean the, the Tottenham result that wasn't an easy game last weekend but results um, we're looking a real strong side now yeah and obviously we all do this don't we we get ahead of ourselves but if I told you that if you're top at Christmas you have a 52% chance of winning the league and you have a 100% chance going on past form of finishing in the top four so if Arsenal's result goes Liverpool's way tonight Liverpool top at Christmas Guaranteed top four finish. Looking back in history, it's the ultimate aim for the season, wasn't it, to finish in the top four? And obviously, we've kind of got ourselves into the title race with the way we've been playing and the fact that the Premier League has been so open. But the aim, and Brendan Rodgers has said it all along, has been about getting back in those top four places. Four seasons outside, this is the second out of three seasons without European football. That's that's not not on for a club like Liverpool, is it? So hopefully, we can get back in those top four places. And these two games coming up away at City and Chelsea will tell us how realistic the title challenge will actually be. If we can get some serious points, three, two, maybe four points from, from these two games, then I think the title race is a real prospect, but we'll have to wait and see how those two games go. And, and the City game's not as feared as, as perhaps a few weeks ago. Aguero, probably the second best player in the Premier League behind Luis Suarez, he's out injured. That's a big boost for Liverpool because defensively we haven't looked solid we, you know we've, we've let in too yeah, many goals yeah. against some pretty average sides out there so we will be tested but the way with us going forward with Luis Suarez then we look like we could score two or three every game and that's the way it's been yeah and if Liverpool incidentally did go on to win the title this season it'd be the first time since 1992 that a team has finished outside the top three one season and then won the title the next so history conversely of my positivity of a few minutes ago history suggests that it probably won't happen because they haven't got the know-how, I guess. That's the, uh, you know, the final push. Nerves well, there's, there's no Alex Ferguson to play the mind games anymore, is there? You know, he's in the stands at Old Trafford. He's not on the touchline anymore, barking out his mind games, which obviously in 2008, 2009 season, which Rafa had a little bite of and, and perhaps cost Liverpool. <laughs> a bit the, more than a little bite, Well, he it? certainly did, and, and obviously that cost Liverpool. But you're looking at 
next week, January transfer window open, the huge news, Luis Suarez signing his new contract. Yeah. That, that's not just a big lift for us Liverpool fans because he's staying at the club. It's a big lift because he will attract players. If you're a player in Europe, do you want to go and play with one of the best players in the world in Luis Suarez? Yes, you do. So, so with him signing that contract, we could certainly strengthen the squad, which we do need to do. You're looking at the bench and there's not as many options as, as you'd like with yeah. all the games coming up. So January will be a big month and we'll be able to attract a, a lot better quality knowing that Suarez is staying and, and all that unwanted specul speculation will go. Yeah, now you've mentioned him, so we, we've got to analyse this little Suarez character. Um, everyone's heard the stats about the number of goals he's scored. Uh, one you may not have known, he's the first... Liverpool player in history to score two or more goals in five successive home games. 14 of his 19 goals this season have been at Anfield. He's only played six games at Anfield. He scored 14 <laughs> goals. I mean, I was sat there on Saturday in the, in the stand and every time he got the ball, you thought, he's going to score here. Yeah. And more often than not, he did. Especially from, I mean, that's the second goal of his was just ridiculous. There was no way you can curl it through that crowd of players into that corner. Yeah, well, he's, he's scoring a lot of goals, which I don't think any player in the Premier League could score. And he'll have his own goal of the season competition at the end of the season because his goals have been <laughs> that good. 19 goals. And I think they're showing stats on match of the day. Like, he scored more goals than half the Premier League. And you see these sort of stats in, like, end of August. Start. We're seeing these at Christmas. It shows how special <laughs> Luis Suarez has been. Missed five games at the start of the season. He's been absolutely brilliant. And, and that's why him signing that, that contract was, was really a big lift, wasn't it? Just before Christmas, before all the unwanted speculation. And it would have come in January. Every club would have been linked to him, like your Real Madrid, your Barcelona's, even Arsenal perhaps would have been a little bit more speculation. The teams in the Champions League who had the potential to tempt him away, now all of a sudden, that puts that to bed. But if we don't finish in the top four this season, Luis Suarez will definitely leave Liverpool. I can't see him staying. We haven't heard to yet about this new contract, whether there is a clause in the contract. I expect there is a clause to say that if we don't finish in the top four, Luis Suarez will leave. But, but it'd be for a lot more than 40 million than it could have been. Well, he's better than Bale, isn't he? It'd be, it'd be more than 80 odd million, whatever Bale went for. I don't know what the figure was, but. About 85, I think. I'm optimistic. Well, we're going to finish in the top four, we'll keep Luis Suarez, and we'll build the squad around players like that. So there's no, no point in worrying about not finishing the top. Certainly, the way we're playing, there's no way we'll finish outside the top four. Yeah, and he's certainly enjoying his Christmas. 10 goals in December. No, no other player's ever scored 10 goals in a single calendar month, and he's still got two more games to go. So, I mean, I don't know where it's going to end with him. Basically, he's just. It's absolutely sensational. I don't think there's ever been a player in in the Premier League history with in a, such a rich vein of form, pro probably in football history. Probably not, uh, but like you say, such a rich vein of form, scoring goals. I think one of his biggest assets is getting more out of the players around him. You know, we're seeing other players step up to the plate now. We've we've had a few key injuries, Sturridge, Gerrard, and, and other players are, are thinking, I need to step up to the plate. And someone like Luis Suarez on the pitch. As a player, you're thinking, I don't want to let this guy down because he is that good. I need to make sure things are happening for him. And I thought it was quite humble of him, respectful when he gave the armband to Daniel Agger when he came on the pitch at Anfield. Yeah. And, and it showed you that he's not a selfish player. It's not all about himself. The goal for Raheem Sterling, putting one on the plate for him. He's, he's a team player. He's doing all this individually with all his goals, but he's a team player, creating stuff for other players. And, and that was a huge mark of respect. It was great to see uh, in giving the armband to Agger. Yeah, and Liverpool are rattling in goals in the last 38 games, which is the equivalent of a season. They've scored 90 times now and won 75 points, um, which is very close to title-winning form. 75 won't win, the, won't win the title. No, not this year. Well, well, 90 won't, goals won't win. 75 wouldn't win the title, no, but you know, you're, you're close, aren't you? We're in the top four. That, that, you'd expect that to be the sort of top four figure, wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, but I, I, I do think the the winning total will be slightly less than in previous seasons. Yeah. I think we were 20 points, 21 points of Man United at Christmas. Well, New Year's Day, sorry. This time last season, you know, and we, and we could be sitting well, that's top, of the, isn't it? top of the table. So it's, uh, it's, it's been a, a great second season for Brendan Rodgers. And you have to give Brendan Rodgers credit for the signing of Luis Suarez. He's getting the best out of Luis Suarez and he's, he wants to stay here at Liverpool. So huge credit to everyone involved getting uh, Suarez to mm. stay at Liverpool. And Rodgers is playing this, this football, he's talking about death by football was his phrase when he, he, he arrived, you know. And under Brendan Rodgers, Liverpool have their best goal per league game ratio since John McKenna was the boss in 1896. So no Liverpool player has scored more goals than Not Brendan Rodgers. you can remember him with all your stats. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I look old in this HD, but I'm not that old, no. Um, and, and the improvement, having 
manage Liverpool for one fewer game than Kenny Dalglish did. Rodgers has 97 points, Dalglish had 85. So he has taken the what was there and improved it quite significantly. So it's, I think you're right, Brendan Rodgers does deserve a lot of credit. Yeah, he does. I think a lot of people are a little bit unsure. And we did start slowly under his regime, but there is a period where he needed to implement his ideas and it's taken a little bit of time, but I think the fans are getting to see now the way Brendan Rodgers wants to play football. Press extremely high, plenty of passes, and, and, and when you side creating and as entertaining as Liverpool have been this season, supporters are always going to be happy when you see goals going in the back of the net as regular and winning points as, as Liverpool have this season. Yeah, there hasn't been one game, I can't think of one, maybe the... Maybe not any game this season. It's either been extraordinarily exciting or very disappointing. There hasn't been yet one of those There's been no nil nil. There's been no nil nil. Two nil wins. You know, we've either been poor against Southampton and Arsenal and Hull, or sensational, as in pretty much every other game. Yeah, I was disappointed at Arsenal because I thought that was a chance because I thought we we could make a little bit of a statement there. We were poor that occasion. I thought Southampton outplayed us at Anfield. I thought they played extremely well on the day. Mm. And Hull was another disappointing one. But like you say, we've, we've blown teams away. and it's Even Cardiff, you know, we've come off the back of a brilliant victory away at Tottenham and you're thinking, will the lads raise themselves again? And they certainly did. They're just, yeah, they did. And it's all been in the first half, absolutely blowing sides away. So you're going in at half-time with basically the, the, back, uh, the points in the bag already. Yeah, and there was also, there was that danger, wasn't there? The Cardiff, everything that was going on, the Malky Mackay factor, would the team suddenly play for him? And for probably for 20 minutes, they did, to be fair to Cardiff. And then suddenly the first goal went in and the heads dropped and suddenly Henderson, Coutinho, Sterling, Suarez, they were all like, well, let's get on these boys. And the last 15 minutes of that first half was just unbelievable. Yeah, it was, almost, it was overshadowing a little bit, wasn't it? The fixture, the fact of all the off-field things at Cardiff and... You did feel for Malky Mackay because first season in the Premier League, they've barely been in the relegation zone all season and, and yet he's under pressure for his job. Quite, quite amazing things, but uh, thankfully the Liverpool players rose to the task and, and got through that tough period early on when Cardiff started well. Yeah, and the Liverpool fans deserve some credit for the, the reception they gave Mackay. You know, he said afterwards, didn't he, what a fantastic reception it was. And very knowledgeable fans, it's always said, but it was a nice, a nice touch. Yeah, well, he said it's obviously a special moment for him. He was touched by that and, and like I say, Liverpool fans appreciate football so appreciate the fact that Malky Mackay is a young British manager doing extremely well and no one really wants to see managers get treated like that because it's it's the fans who are, who are you look at Hull, Hull Tigers well, the fans that want to see the club <laughs> called Hull Tigers and these owners coming in don't understand English football enough and messing about with with a lot of stuff that is upsetting the fans and it's, mm. it's, this is something that needs to be addressed but is there an argument to say that without these owners Hull and Cardiff might not even be in existence, so you have to let them do what they want. And they're obviously very successful men because they're multi multi millionaires. I just think there needs to be tighter guidelines. I, th I don't think they should be messing with, with names, uh, colours of the shirt, you know, doing what the, yes, they are the owners and, and have the final say, but I think it's, they're kind of having too much say in the past. You didn't really know who the chairman was, who the owner was, unless you were a proper fan. Now, the, this, this owner, everyone knows all, all over the country, whatever team you support, who this tan guy is, whereas in the past, Chairman's kind of had a little bit of a back seat, but now these owners want to be famous themselves almost. Indeed, indeed. I just want, I don't want to pour any, um, any uh, water on our fire here, but Liverpool's next eight games yielded just six points last season. So this is now going to be, you've already mentioned the next two, but it's actually the next eight where we, we performed poorly last season. So this is going to be a real test now. Get through Christmas, get through New Year, go easy on the... Uh, but, but like I said, it, last season we were ninth at Christmas, the top of the table, so it doesn't really matter. We've improved hugely from last season, and I'm hoping Boxing Day will be better than it was last Boxing Day, because for me, I thought that was the worst performance of the season. I went stoked, we got bullied, we got, we got outplayed, and we didn't deserve anything from that game. So it'll be a better game against City, both teams wanting to play football, mm. and um, hopefully we can come out on top and get something there. Yeah. Liverpool could actually lose the next eight games and still be in a better position points-wise than they were last season. We won't lose all eight games. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just very quickly on Liverpool before we move on. Um, Raheem Sterling, not your favourite player two months ago, but now, I mean, what's going on? He's Under Brendan Rodgers, he started the first 16 matches of the Rodgers regime. He was then dropped um, this time yeah. last season. Didn't play 90 minutes again since New Year's Eve. This season, kind of doing it in reverse. He only started one game before December, but now he's back in the starting lineup, and confidence is high. Yeah, I think a frustrating player because you know 
how much talent, how much pace, how much potential he has to really influence games and the amount of times he's, he's almost hidden away in games. You're thinking, want more from you? And that was the frustrating thing. But now the goal against Norwich late on in the game gave him real confidence, much better display against West Ham. Superb performance away at Tottenham, got himself a goal, had the full back on toe so that he had to get replaced at half-time. He was playing that well. And again on Saturday, he's getting himself goals, running in behind defences and, and using that pace much more effectively. And not many players are probably quicker than Raheem Sterling, but he's using the pace now in the right way so that he can influence these games. And, and it's good to see because he's, he's getting goals. He didn't get enough goals last season. And all of a sudden, he's on a good goal scoring run and deserves his place in the side at the moment. Indeed, he does. So there's obviously going to be the, um, the Sterling for England man bandwagon striking up its tune again, but also the... Ross Barclay for England bandwagon, that is now in proper full effect with the, the backing of Gary Lineker on Twitter, among yeah. others, and um, another sensational show from him. <laughs> it was, I mean, sporting his new haircut for Christmas, Indeed, which I'm, yeah. I'm tempted to have a bit of a bargain. It must have been now. a bet or something he lost, whatever it was. But um, he, he is such a talent, 20, and he's, he, he plays in that position which I suppose nowadays with a lot of teams not playing two strikers. He plays just in between the, the, the lines, as they call it, between the midfield and the defence, and he gets himself into some terrific positions. His touch is superb. He always manages to take his touch into space. He's got quick feet. He's been compared to, to Paul Gascoigne. He's, he, he's just he's an exciting player to watch. He really is. And you do fear for Everton a little bit because they've had a bit of a history of losing some of the best players. And, um, Ross Barkley is going to be in huge demand in January and at the end of the season um, but yesterday he was absolutely superb his winning goal the free kick we saw Yaya Torre score one for City and off the bar whenever that was and uh, well at the weekend against Fulham just just he is a real entertaining player to watch he hit the bar before he, he scuffed his shot but he's always involved and as a 20 year old he's um, an exciting talent and he should, oh, if he continues that form he'll definitely be on the plane for England in uh, Brazil yeah. and he's big as well isn't he he's got real strength about him so he's not just relying on sleight of foot he's got the power to to battle through into the last 90 minutes and play at full pelt the whole way through yeah he's a strong boy he's got a burst of pace as well so he's not sluggish out there and um, his awareness his ability to pass the ball he is a top player and we've seen in the past with Everton losing the best players like sort of Jack Rodwell and not really kicked on in the career so mm. he'll have uh, an interesting decision to make when all the big teams start well, that's, flooding that's around probably him the, um, That's probably the warning sign isn't it for him so yeah. if, if someone comes along to prize him away they can say Everton can say well look at what happened to Jack Rodwell you know give it another year yeah. see where you are if, I think if Everton want to finish in these top four places he's going to be key to that as well and um, it's funny because we're talking about Liverpool being Christmas on, on New Year's Day and at Christmas, but looking at Everton's two fixtures, Sunderland and Southampton at home, they could quite easily be top of the table themselves <laughs> on, on New Year's Day. They've, they've yeah. been absolutely superb this season. The result at Swansea yesterday, it was, the game was in the balance a little bit. They, they got the goal, took the lead, a great goal from Coleman. Conceded a sloppy equalising goal, but then showed the character to go on and get that winning goal with Ross Barkley. And they're games which, if you want to be in the top four, you've got to be getting points from. And, and they look mm. a real strong outfit. Under David Moyes, would Everton have pushed on for a winner in that game? Or would they have sat back and said, a point away from home is enough? Well, you, you've got to say under Martinez, they do look a much more of an attacking team. They look to be going on to try and win the three points. And... It's uh, Everton fans must be absolutely delighted. They're, they're fourth at the moment, only a couple of points behind Liverpool. And for me, I think they're a real threat for those top four places. I think the top five at the moment will be the top four places and maybe change around a little bit. But I can't see it changing too much. I don't see Tottenham. I don't see Man United getting in those top four or five places. But Everton, if uh, if they can keep hold of their top players in January, then they'll definitely be in the fight for top four. Yeah, it's really exciting times, isn't it? Uh, and Everton, this, they've got this sensational home record. Uh, but now, away from home, four away league wins already this season. That's as many as they managed in the whole of last season. So they're stringing results together, home and away, which, as you say, puts them right in the frame. Yeah, it certainly does. And uh, Goodison, it's a tough place to go. I think they've only lost once this season. They have, and that was <laughs> at, at City. At City, and they're a little bit unfortunate, you could say, on the day. But um, Martinez, to, to have come in and, and changed it so much is, uh, is quite amazing, really. Yeah, and another goal from defence. We talk, we talk about this every week. There seems to be an Everton defender popping up with a goal, and it's normally Seamus Coleman um, 
the manager says he's the complete player, which for a, for a young fullback isn't a compliment you hear too often, is it? Yeah, I personally thought Barkley was the best player for Everton, but a lot of people saying Coleman. He, he played extremely well. I'm <coughs> looking at the goalkeeper for the goal and I'm thinking <laughs> he's got to do better than he actually did. But fair play to Coleman. He's had a crack from that distance and, and got himself a goal. And that was an important goal to take the lead. And I always felt as though Everton looked the most likely to get the goal. And, and they did, but they're scoring goals from all over the pitch, not just relying on Lukaku, who has been superb for them, but other players are chipping in with goals as well. Mm, he's dried up a bit, Lukaku, hasn't he? But he's got two home games now at Christmas to maybe, to maybe get himself back on track. Interestingly, Everton have used the fewest number of players this season. Only 17 players have started Premier League games for Everton, and 26 is the, is the most at Sunderland. And it's the, obviously that togetherness and familiarity breeds decent football but there's also then the warning signs you know if you get an injury yeah. things start to unravel potentially tiredness as well could creep in but I think that will be the big test for Everton the size of the squad if they start picking up injuries a couple of suspensions then we'll, we'll be looking at the bench to see who they got to come in at the moment they, they, they've got an okay bench we can come on and, and do a job but if they get two or three that'll be the real test for Everton but you know fantastic to see that they're absolutely flying top four Two home games to come, you know, potentially top of the table come New Year's Day. Yeah, there we go. It's all happiness and sunshine and everything on Merseyside at the moment. Apart from at Tranmere, unfortunately, their, uh, their mini slump continues. Another goal for Ryan Lowe. 14 for the season. 14 for the season. That's impressive. That is very impressive, actually, especially because he started so slowly. He's been on a real good run, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah he certainly has been. We're talking about Suarez, and I'm sure the League One statisticians are getting out. Ryan Lowe starts 14 goals before Christmas. It's a good return for a team that are struggling. Lost three on the bounce. Two away games coming up over Christmas. You're thinking, not really sure where the next point's going to come from for Tranmere, but they need, to, they need to end this poor run at the moment. Mm. Shrewsbury, that's the next one, Boxing Day. That's the potential one they can get something from. Sheffield United away, not sure. Wolves at home, not sure. So Shrewsbury, they need to make full use of that game at Boxing Day. Yeah, well, let's hope they have a, a fantastic Christmas period. And wherever you're celebrating Christmas, watching this, could be anywhere in the world. That's the power of the internet. We hope you have a fantastically enjoyable time. If you've already had it, I hope you're not feeling too poorly. Neil and I will be back at some point. We haven't quite discussed when. Um, without, without, busy the Christmas hats. Period. without the hats. Yeah. Although you, you quite enjoyed wearing that. It was a festive treat for all the uh, <laughs> watchers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I imagine this could be the, uh, the internet sensation, this still of you in this hat. Yeah, it could be going around Twitter this picture, I'm sure. Good stuff. <laughs> OK, thank you for watching, folks. Have a great time. Thank you to Colin Bailey for sorting us out with these fantastic uh, Christmas images. Thank you to Ruby's Cafe, especially Helen, who's looked after us very nicely today. She even provided the hats, folks. So get yourselves down to Ruby's Cafe in West Kirby for a festive cup of tea. And we will see you next time. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.